What is going on guys? Carter here. Got another video for you. We are still talking about the deadlock and I wanted to do uh, a kind of longer video talking about some of the critiques on this knife and compare it to this Ultratech 2 here from Microtech. Now the point of this video, right, um, is I like to piss people off. I like to ruffle feathers and make people angry. No, that's not really true. Um, although sometimes that gets a little spicy and it's kind of fun. The main reason for this is by nature, I'm a little contrarian. Uh, I like to play the devil's advocate. I think it makes for a, a good, well-rounded conversation. I struggle with just drinking the Kool-Aid um, most of the time or drinking all of it. I'll sip the Kool-Aid. I'll maybe drink half of it, but I don't just chug that Kool-Aid and not ask for a glass of milk. That makes no sense. That, uh, that, is that an allegory? That makes no sense. Um, but I like to do that, right? So when people are in love with something like the Deadlock, which is an amazing knife, don't get me wrong, I love this thing. Um, however, I do think there's a lot of hype around this knife. There's a lot of excitement around this knife and I don't know if it's all 100% deserved. Um, so what I like to do is poke some holes in that and provide a different opinion and some different insight on this knife. I know there's a lot of people that are asking, is this worth the money? Should I get this? Is there something magical about it? completely up to you whether or not that's true. You're not really going to know until you get one in your hands and you own it. However, I, I do want to provide some what I would consider to be a fairly unbiased opinion on some of these things that are being claimed. And I recently received this um, signature series Ultratech, and I haven't had an Ultratech in a really long time. And when I put these things side by side, I realized that uh, there's a lot of similarities here. Actually, uh, I think this was a better view than I had before. Why am I mixing it up here? Uh, you can see that the overall size is very, very similar. Blade size is very, very similar. The overall length is kind of similar. Um, so let's, let's get into this, let's talk about it. So why am I comparing these two? Well, this guy, the Hawk, is about three times the cost of this guy. And this guy isn't even the cheapest, ooh, like how I'm rubbing that there, I like this uh, texturing to put on here. This guy is not even the cheapest Ultratech. If you go with a standard milk toast Ultratech, this is about 4x the cost of one of those. This one is a little upgraded, not in any meaningful way. Blade steel, blade profile, all the same. This just has a, a cooler pattern on the handle here and then it has the little signature which I like. It adds a little bit of class to it. That's the other reason why I wanted to compare these two is out of my Microtex. This is one of kind of the classier ones that you can get. It's not obnoxious or over the top or, or duotone and things like that. But this is quite a bit more expensive. So I wanted to do a comparison. Now the number one thing, should we get to the elephant in the room? The elephant in the room on this particular comparison and that is blade play. So the Hawk Deadlock, hence the name, has zero blade play in any direction. Take my word for it. I'm not a fanboy. It does not move. Mine does not move. Some people have had theirs wiggle a little and they send it in, they get it fixed. It should not move. That's the point of it, is that there is no blade play, period. And in my example, that is 100% true. I can grab the tip of this thing. It does not move in any direction, up, down, left, right, back, forward does not move, rock, freaking solid. This knife does that via a fairly complicated or more complicated mechanism inside. There's actual milling and moving parts in the tang of this blade, and then there's an additional piece that pins this blade up against the side so that it cannot move. Um, so the internals of the deadlock is more complicated. There are more parts than the Ultratech. However, through each iteration, the Model A, B, and C, those amount of parts, the simplicity has gotten better and better with each iteration. But still, at the end of the day, in order to achieve this dead lockness, there has to be more involved compared to the uh, Ultratech here. So how much blade wiggle are we talking about? Well, in this particular comparison, this Ultratech has some of the least blade play out of all of my Microtechs. Uh, back and forth, I'm moving it. Maybe you can see my finger moving a little. Side to side, it moves a little bit more. You can see it wiggle there. Very little movement. Now, I've noticed that the Scarab and the Combat Truidon has the most blade play in all of my Microtechs. In fact, the Scarab is number one. Number two is the Combat Truidon. And then 
the Ultratech and my Dirac Delta have the least amount of blade plate. But one thing I don't see people talk about as much is the out and in blade play. See how that moves out and in? That's how they get the mechanism to work. When you open it, it actually overshoots the lock a little bit to give the lock enough time to spring into place. Because if you don't have that buffer, the blade would move quicker than the lock can move into place and it wouldn't lock out. So this has this kind of play too. I don't hear people talk about it. All my Microtechs do. They all have this kind of play. Now this doesn't affect lock strength. There's a spring pulling it down onto the lock and that has nothing to do with how well this lock will hold up, but you do have this out and in play on the Ultratech. Now, side note, which lock is stronger? I have no idea. This one's been tested quite a bit. It does some amazing things. However, they're all kind of isolated. You know, let's pound this through a board twice in a row. But what does that mean five years from now? You know, what, what permanent damage was taken by pounding it through that board? I don't know. It did handle it. Now, this uses a hardened steel kind of uh, little plate that pops up and moves and locks the blade on one side. Um, fairly robust. It's, it's a small enough piece of hardened steel. It's never going to bend. The only concern I would have is uh, galling of the aluminum. Aluminum is fairly soft, and so you push hard enough in there, it's going to push that plate in, and, and there's a spring involved and things like that. The deadlock uses a ceramic ball bearing that falls into a little channel on the side as its lock. Once again, I don't know which one's stronger. I could theorize. I, I wouldn't know. And so far, I haven't seen anybody test the deadlock the same way that the Ultratech or Microtechs have been tested. I just haven't seen that. Steel. Uh, I guess we're doing a comparison video. I, I wasn't really sure what the point of this video was. I just want to talk to you guys about knives that I love. Uh, steel, I'm going to say, uh, I mean, they're not the same. This is 20 CV. This is M390. I would take the 20 CV over the M390, but we're talking, I mean, that's such a small thing. I'm considering them the same ballpark, right? Like, Yes, this is better steel, but not enough to say that's why it costs 800 more dollars because it's 20 CV rather than M390. M390 is great. And then when we're talking about heat treat and things, I, I don't know. I haven't seen tests on the heat treat on the Gavin, uh, on the Hawk. I would assume that this one is probably better, you know, because it's not mass produced. Uh, but you never know. Maybe Microtech really has a process honed in and they get the best heat treat because this is more of a bespoke type thing. I don't know if Hawk does heat treats in-house or if they contract another company. I'm not completely sure their process, so I can't really speak to that. Um, let's talk overall size. And here's where I think the Hawk kind of loses. So blade width is about the same. Blade length is almost the exact same. The Hawk has maybe a few centimeters in length. Width is very similar, kind of hard to completely judge visually just because we've got serrations on one side here. The Hawk may be a centimeter wider, potentially. Handle length, if you take the glass breaker, they're almost exactly the same handle length. If you take off the glass breaker, the Ultratech has a shorter handle. When you're talking about handle width, here's where I think the Ultratech really shines. The um, the Hawk is pretty frickin' bulky. Look how wide that is. It is a monster. And that, that is a critique I have for the Hawk. The blade to handle ratio is, is just off. The handle is too big. Um, or at least it's not, okay, I'm not gonna say too big. That's, that's kind of a, a personal taste thing. The handle is, the handle to blade ratio is out there for me. Now the width I can handle because there's a certain visual to it. Um, it also gives you more purchase. You have more options to put your thumb in. But the thickness, in my opinion, is uh, is too much. It shouldn't be that thick. It really fills up your pocket, and the blade is not uh, particularly large. You know, if I'm going to have something this big in my pocket, I would want it to be a little slimmer. And that's where the Ultratech really shines because it is slimmer in width as well as depth by a long shot. Now we do have. I want to do a weight comparison between these two because that's the other big thing. This Ultratech is feather feather light compared to the Deadlock. 
Now the deadlock uh, does have some titanium on it, right? It has this button is titanium. It has this insert here in titanium. Pocket clip is titanium. I'm not even going to talk about the pocket clip because that's such a personal preference. Some people really like this design and it uh, has a lot of great features. Other people really like the deeper carry. So I'm not even going to talk to that. That's really personal preference. They both have pros and cons. Neither one is outright better than the other. This one definitely is more premium. It's a solid piece of titanium milled with a mechanism on it. Now let's do uh, this weight thing before I got distracted. So the deadlock, oh, it helps if I put it in frame, 4.7 ounces. So, I mean, it's not a behemoth, but you also have to remember it's a pretty small svelte blade. And then we've got 3.2 ounces on the Ultratech. The Ultratech is super duper lightweight. They both have aluminum chassis, by the way. This is not titanium or anything like that. Both have a two-piece construction aluminum chassis. So the point of this video is not to try and downplay, well, maybe it is. Uh, maybe it is trying to downplay the deadlock. Uh, because like I said, there's there's so much hype around this knife and I think it's not all deserved. And I like to keep things in proper perspective. This thing is cool and it's a cool piece of engineering and it looks really classy and looks really nice. And I love how it's bringing people into OTFs that might not have been. However, to call it the greatest of all time and to say that it's the perfect carry OTF or the, the perfect this or perfect that, I don't know if that's really true, um, especially at the increased cost. This thing is super sleek, super lightweight, similar blade size, good quality. Yes, you do get a little bit of wiggle, but it is, uh, you know, this is a lot of money. This is three to four times the cost of one of these. And I just don't know if it's necessarily worth it for everybody. And that's what I'm trying to, if you want a deadlock because you think it's cool, you're going to get one. But this video is for the people that are wondering, like, is this really worth all that money? You know, I, I don't think it is, but... People make it sound like it is, so maybe I gotta just do it. Maybe not. Maybe an Ultratech makes more sense for you. Um, Ultratech Signature Series, still a third of the cost compared to one of these. So, all right guys, I'm out. Just wanted to provide a little bit of perspective on the deadlock here. I do love my deadlock, um, but I also really like OTFs, and I like to have a lot of them. And with the deadlock, I just don't feel like I really can. There's not enough variety, and they're just too expensive to like collect deadlocks for me anyways. And I think for a lot of people out there, it's pretty pricey knife for a single knife. Um, but anyways, all right guys, I'm out of here. Catch you later. See you.